We are ready for quarterfinal number two, Ronnie Seffo and Jurgen Krug. And now coming to the blue corner from New Zealand, Ronnie Seffo. And now coming to the red corner, Jorgen Cruz. God will take away the shame of our youth, and he will give us double honor. Judges at ringside scoring this bout will be Sal D'Amato, Rick Winter, and Glenn Trowbridge. When the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Nelson Hamilton. And now, for the Arroz K1 Battle at Bellagio 3, this is our second quarterfinal match. Three three minute rounds. K1 rules apply. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trimmed with white. Standing six feet tall, weighing in officially at 239 pounds. His discipline, Muay Thai. His record, outstanding 32 victories, including 19 knockouts with only six defeats. He's the 2001 K1 New Zealand champion from New Zealand. Here is Ronnie Seiko. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing camouflage, 6 feet 2, officially weighing 230 pounds even. His record, 62 victories, including 29 knockouts, 12 defeats with two bouts even. He has captured titles in K-1 tournaments around the world, including Italy, Russia, the Netherlands, and the European Championship. Comes to us from Sweden, here is Jorgen, the Viking crew. Gentlemen, we went over the rules. He said you understand the rules, protect yourself at all times, listen for my commands at all times. No elbows, watch your head butts, watch the groin shots. Let's get it on. Let's take a look at our tail of the tape of quarterfinal number two. Okay, the big thing here about these two, they're about the same age, about the same height, three inch advantage for. Jurgen Kruf, but the difference in KOs, 29 to 8. Tremendous amount of experience for Jurgen Kruf that Ronnie Sifo just cannot match, huh? Jurgen Kruf in the camouflage trunks and camouflage skin on the right of your screen. Ronnie Sifo 
in the dark trunks with the white trim making his first K1 appearance of 2004. And as you've heard, brother of Ray Seppo, who's on our card later on. No knockdown, says referee Nelson Hamilton. The winner of this fight will take on Brecht Wallace, coming off a stunning knockout of Carter Williams. That'll happen in the semifinals. Ronnie Seppo, his famous brother, one of the most renowned fighters worldwide, K1 fighting. Ronnie's got some big shoes to fill. He's coming behind Ray. Well, he's a tough kid. He's got some seasoning to do, does Ronnie Seppo. And he's got some ground to make up, 32 years old, still early in the K1 career. Jurgen Kruth has shown already that he has a huge reach, and he can touch with power from distance. But if Seppo is anything like his brother, he knows how to work inside, take the punishment, and dish it out to the stomach, and then go upstairs with it. Proof, the Italy tournament champion in 2004. First came to note back in 2001 with a win over Stefan Lecco. The big names in K1 fighting for many years. Jurgen Kruf go over the top of Ronnie Seppo. Missed everything. And Ronnie Seppo, I think, needs to be a little more active inside. Then he could stay away from those wide arcing kicks that Jurgen Kruth has demonstrated so far. Kruth with 29 KOs and 62 wins. Haven't seen anything particularly powerful out of him yet, but this is still early in the fight. About a minute left in round one. Good knee strike right there from Jurgen Kruth, mostly blocked by Seppo. He's got to be careful about going to the head with the knee, which you cannot do. Knee strike attempt by Kruth. Didn't quite make it in. Good short left from Zeppo. Caught the chin of, of Kruth. Nobody hurt. Kruth coming back with his own left. And he's got to be careful with that. You cannot pull the head down into the knee. Closing seconds of round one. Seppo will make it through his first Las Vegas appearance intact, and just like his brother, has shown he can take the punishment. You're just throwing it from a distance, both with the legs and with the hands. Neither fighter doing much damage to the other. Tough to follow and act like what happened in round three of the first one. Probably. Well, this is round one action. Cruz comes up with a big right leg and just slides over top of Seppo's head. Trying to land a roundhouse uh, a la Brent Wallace uh, in the last Second fight. Down, mouth piece in. But a little too high. And a little too, Second down, mouth too piece good at ducking by Ronnie Seppo. Too. Mouth piece. Hey. Round number two. Scheduled 4-3. Now, I would say in this round, Seppo's got to get busy. First round, I'm sure, went to Jurgen Kruf, mainly on aggressiveness. Now, here comes Ronnie. I, I guess somebody's given Seppo the word. He's waiting for you to, to get, say. <laughs> maybe he's listening to me at ringside. But he's starting to get busy. Jürgen. Doesn't need to wait for Kruf. Kruf has a big reach on him. Jurgen Kruf. Looking for the big knockout kick to the head. Not a lot of activity down low. Ruth throwing the knees as well as roundhouse, as well as those roundhouse kicks. Haven't seen any effective kicking yet out of Ronnie Seppo. Should be going to the legs. Roundhouse is up high or just a little too slow. And he can't quite get up to the head of Kruth. Guy's too tall. Has Remy Bonjeski brought that flying knee strike back into vogue <laughs> everywhere in K1? It's like Kruth has been watching some tapes of Bonjaski. 
D don't really see anything with a whole lot behind it that Kruth is throwing now. Looks like he's trying to conserve a lot of energy or he's just waiting for the right shot. Like, take those kicks and knees to the stomach and takes a lot out of your opponent. As they get closer and closer to the end of the fight, those effects start to be felt. Good leg kick by Seppo. He's got to work more on that. Should be working on that front leg of Cruz. And you might be quick to say that Ronnie Seppo fights like his brother, and you're right, but Ronnie Seppo fights pretty much like all New Zealand fighters down there. This is this is their pattern. That very Mark tough. Hunt included. That's it. It's the Mark Hunt style. Very tough, straight ahead, almost indestructible. When they finally catch up to you, you're you're done. Oh. <laughs> nice roundhouse kick. Just glanced off the forehead of Cruz. All right, break. Back out. So Ronnie Seppo starting to show a little moxie himself. He can go upstairs if he needs to. He's got a, a cut or at least some blood on his forehead, does Seppo. I'm not sure if it's transferred blood or if actually Kruth has scored a pot. Good heavy punches from Seppo. And Jurgen does the right thing and sweeps him off his feet. It's twice in this fight he's done that. That takes a lot out of it. You go down and you got to keep getting up off the canvas. Doesn't seem like much, but every time you do it, it, it has an impact. cruz has got that nice combination when he comes in with a one, two, three, and then a knee strike. Ten seconds. Final seconds of round two, and Cruz lands his best punch of the fight right stop, there. Stop, 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 stop. Back up. Not much damage on Seppo. Up till now, he's had a pretty good defense, yeah. but. A some some blows got through in that round, and I think that was Kluth's round. I'd have him ahead right now by at least one point. Jurgen Kluth's corner. Between round instructions, and probably just a little more of same. I would expect maybe a little more activity. The judges, I don't think, are going to hand a decision based on what they've seen so far in either one of these fights. Well, they may have to to Kruth because he's doing the most stuff, and this is part of it. That gets caught on the elbow. Like most of the stuff that Kruth has thrown, nothing has really gotten through, done much damage. Almost got penalized in this fight for pulling the head down to the knee. Really got to keep an eye on that. Looks like perhaps his uh, Muay Thai training has just ingrained that in him so much. But here in Nevada, you cannot do that move. No head strikes to the face. This is round three, our scheduled final round here in quarterfinal number two. Ronnie Seppo in the black trunks, Jurgen Kruth in the green camouflage trunks and tattoos. And each fighter, I think, has to get busy. And perhaps we're waiting for this third round for it to happen, because it's happened already. But Kruth is still. Well, I'd say Seppo has taken the advantage now. He's throwing more stuff. Kruth just keeps peppering in there. He's got the kicks going, the long reaches with the punches. Nothing that's going to take Seppo down, but it certainly is building up some points. Each fighter now very active. Ronnie Seppo now beginning to use the feet more than he has. I just don't see a plan, though, that Seppo has for getting inside of Cruz's defenses and scoring heavily or or landing a knockdown blow. You know how these guys fight. You know exactly how it works. You go in, <laughs> you get yourself pummeled, and you throw three or four hard punches while you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but somehow I, I just think that's not going to work with Cruz. Now, Seppo needs to fight. He's got a minute and a half left in this round. He has got to go all out. No stop, punch, punch, kick, kick. But instead, he's against the ropes. Kruth is still controlling the action. Well, exactly, and that's where Kruth's advantage comes in because he has been the more active fighter through the first two rounds. And now, as you said, Mike, continuing that pattern here and even taking it up a notch or so is really going to benefit this fighter from sweep. Yeah, the best kick right there. Yes, maybe the best blow of the fight for Jurgen Kruth. Ronnie Seppo's not going anywhere after those punches. He just needs to start dishing it out himself. Right. 
Booth still basically having his way, fighting when he wants, keeping Seppo at a distance. Seppo has the power, he just needs some technique to get inside. Booth is not opening up too much to give him much of a target. Truth almost looking now like he knows he's got the fight one on points and just wants to start resting for his second, uh, for his uh, semifinal round fight. Yeah, just when you do that, the judges throw a fourth round at you, so he's got to be yes. careful. A big finish here for Kruth, could seal the deal. Final seconds now of the fight. Jurgen Kruth now goes Kruth. upstairs with the punches. And that was a good right hand by Kruth, maybe the hardest punch of the fight. And that is the end of the third round and supposedly the final. The judges have that option, but Jurgen Kruth held the slight advantage throughout the three rounds. And the judges could not go wrong by giving him this fight if they decide to do so. I see it as a point, point and a half. Jurgen Kruth, maybe two points. Depends on how much of a margin in each round. Ronnie Seppo's corner, immediately putting him to school. And these are replays from that round. Not a lot of action, but that kick was very hard. Kruth finally put something behind one of those kicks, and although he caught it partly on the arm and knocked his own arm into his body, Kruth is a big guy and hit very hard. Let's see if he does advance to the semifinals. Let's see if he turns up the heat a little bit in the semifinal round match. He's going to have to because he'll be fighting, uh, the, uh, the, be fighting Breck Wallace. We saw what Wallace can do. And I just said, that's so good. Let's go. Again, so I have a low board on for us. Jurgen Kruth has been away from Las Vegas for three years. Last fought and lost to Murray Smith in 2001. Seppo just looking tired in that round. Throwing punches, but one punch, two punch combinations, and then a rest. All right, I think we have our decision. Let's go up to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Bellagio, we go to the scorecards. Glenn Trowbridge and Rick Winter both scored about 30 to 27. Sal D'Amato scores at 30 to 27.5. All to the winner by unanimous decision, Jorgen the Viking Kruk. As expected, a unanimous decision for Jorgen Kruth here in semifinal, quarterfinal number two over Ronnie Seppo. Ronnie Seppo does have some seasoning to do. That was the word on him coming in. Jurgen Kruth, I think, as you mentioned, Mike, is going to have to get more active, certainly in his semifinal, to come against Breck Vallis. Jurgen Kruth held the upper hand for most of the fight. He got stronger, he got better in round number three. It eventually came away with unanimous decision here in this quarterfinal.